All right, all right, all right. Hello, JLBC Singles uh, people. You're welcome to another Saturday where we come live talking about real issues um, that pertains to Christian singles, including uh, finance, relationship, and um, a lot more. So if you're tuning in for the first time, you're very much welcome here. And we are glad to have you. For all of you that have been old time members, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you should go right now and subscribe because we are dropping bombs over there, dropping fire every every week. So um, today is another day, and we are talking about a topic that is very touchy to especially men, men like myself. So um, I want you to tune in, get involved in this topic, say your mind, say your peace. You know, everybody has a point of view to these things. And just as a background, just um, so you know, the LBC Singles is a group that has existed for, uh, I believe, two, three years now? Yeah. Almost three years, right? And by the grace of God, we've been we've been kicking it and we've been um we've been growing basically and it's because of all of you guys that have been really interacting and um getting involved right so but um well as you know this year we want to turn up the heat we want to talk about some touchy things we want to talk about real topics right real things that you would talk with your friends and all of that and that's why we picked this topic, okay? And um, I was like, man, if we talk about this thing today, uh, we are going to get to the center and the, the, the crux of um, some of these issues that uh, uh, relationships face. So the topic we are addressing today is um, what um, would I say an unmarriageable man is kind of like a question like imagine you speaking to your friends and uh, um, maybe if you're a guy your brother and you're speaking to another brother and then you 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 uh, you hear um, them telling you about a story about some sister talking about um, this brother is not marriageable and that's what we want to talk about you know and even guys some other men even talk about other men that uh, other brothers that are not marriageable. So we want to look at um, what it is that makes a man unmarriageable, or is it possible to have an unmarriageable man? So just um, for those of you that don't know me yet, my name is David, right? I'm like, um, how would I say? The third wheel or the uh, tech brain behind all of these things that we're doing right here and um it's a pleasure to serve i'll just let um my other hosts introduce themselves okay um i prefer to be called madame awokoya deborah um i'm also one of the admins and i'm glad to be here today to discuss this topic yeah very important topic pertinent also okay and so i hope we're gonna make it real i've always said that i'll really like that we'll always keep uh the topics on this platform real because um is what affects uh the singles christian singles all over the world in all the, wherever you might find yourself whatever continent it's an important topic, so many issues bothering the minds of singles and just we're just here to discuss them openly, frankly to, to address those issues, to try to change mindsets and so that you can have a happy home, a happy and a godly home. So I'm very glad to be with you today. I'm coming to you from, um, my space here, here in France. Thank you. 
Uh, yeah. I'll hand it over to the third person here. How yeah, my name is Princess, guys. I'm always happy to see you. You guys know my face, right? I'm not a new face. Um, you've seen me come here to talk at different occasions. And I'm always delighted to be in the midst of young people because, of course, we are innovative. You know, we, we see our mind the way it is. We, we share, you know, this generation of young people don't hold, don't hold back. They just say it the way it is. They just express themselves. And this is the fun that, I, that we get from being part of this group. We get to know exactly what the young Christians are thinking. Is no, the world is becoming a small village. So anybody that doesn't know can get to know just by coming out here. So I'm very happy to be in your midst today. And I hope that we learn something from today's um, live. Please do it to share. Share on your space, share on your page, share to your friends, to share to your brothers, your sisters, and your colleagues. Everybody that will benefit something from this. And please put in your questions, put in your questions. Let's see your comments, your questions, what it is that you want us to, to, to know. Like maybe you have a question about this. There's something that's not clear as we're talking. Please share your questions and sh put your comments, put your like. Let's know that you can hear us. If you can hear us, please click like, love, an emoji, anything. Just let us know that you can hear us. Okay, let's go for it. All right. So thank you so much. Um, again, once more, <clears throat> the topic is an unmarriageable man. Who is an unmarriageable man? So number one, for me, I would like to start with the basics of the basics of a good marriage. And a good marriage, in my opinion, is one that has God in it. So if there is no God in that marriage, I mean, the guy can be a wreck. You can never predict what's going to happen uh, in the nearest future, right? So for me, number one, an unmarriageable man is somebody that does not have the fear of God in their hearts. Right. If you don't, if you meet a guy, he's a nice guy with all the money and all that. He checks all your boxes. He's funny. He's uh, very romantic. He is um, influential. Is kind. Is nice. Is all the things that a woman dreams of at night. But if this guy does not have the fear of God in his heart, I mean, you'll be playing a gamble because. You never know what tomorrow can be. When problems start happening in your relationship, that's when you start seeing the differences between the child of God and somebody that does not fear God. So um, I just like us to talk about um, the spiritual aspect of, of a relationship or a man, how important it is for a man to have the spirit of God in him. Okay. Yeah, so I've just said, I think that's a very important point uh, for singles today. Uh, we have so many people in the church. We have so many people who go to church, who are leaders in churches, uh, who um, moderate or do one or two things in church. And many of our singles, Christian ladies, um, have the assumption that once you're in church, once you come to church regularly, and maybe you have this for those of us that are from Santimonious, from this, uh, from the conservative background that we we are from, that's the Dipalai Bible Church. Um, maybe he has a way of dressing. He doesn't keep a birds like you are doing. <laughs> oh, um, um, ah, he wears a big trouser or what? I don't know. All of that, oh, always, he has all these words, these languages of God bless you, uh, all this, you know, religious and sanctimonious way of talking. You know, he knows how to say the right thing by the grace of God, fire, all those kind of things. You know, he's, he's very, very, he has the language, he has the heavenly language, the church language, churchy language of those that have always been in church. Yeah, there's a strong tendency for a lady to assume that that's um, a Christian and a marriageable man. Or maybe he sings very well, 
or he plays an instrument that you really like and is a shinist and influential uh, brother in church or pastor or what have you. Mm. Uh, whenever he takes all the people, oh, is this one so fire and all the rest, fire, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, let us pray, and we really, you know, we, 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 you know, show that he's so motivated to pray. Yes, and you say, oh, that brother, that brother, he loves the Lord. That brother loves the Lord. Go when I'm laying up the churches, praying. Yes, so very. Yeah. So many sisters are carried away by that. Oh, he's very quiet. He looks very calm, together, collected. You know. You always stay in one place, you know, has, yeah. And you don't know that person in his day-to-day -day living. Uh, what, how he, or how he lives his life away from the church. What happens if he's in a tight corner, he's in a situation where he may not have food to eat or um, if he does not do this for those of, for those of us that are in the diaspora, for those of us that are maybe in, in America, in Australia, maybe you are you're in the UK, you're in France, Belgium, the United States, and you just came into the country and you are looking for what they call green pasture. And so you need papers. Uh -huh. You don't have papers and you don't know how to go about it. Yes, that's when you know who is it, who is it really a real Christian. Is that brother a Christian? He's ready to um, give away his birthright. Just like um, he saw it. He said, well, what, what, what is it, my birthright? What's, what's it, this birthright? Give me to eat for rage. Mm. doesn't give it down. I need papers. I'm going to do. I can't go back to my country and say I was not able to settle. I'm not smart enough. So I will just do it in any way I can. And then after I will say, I'm sorry. I'll tell God I'm sorry. You know? Mm. Or oh, is in a situation where he, come, he comes to town and he knows nobody. That's when you know who is a Christian. Will he, when he meets with a friend, maybe a guy that he doesn't know, uh, who is willing to accommodate him and this. Mm. He's, um, he's, he doesn't tell the person his real, his, the real, his real personality. I think he doesn't show who he is really. He, he's not ready to show that I'm a Christian. He, he tries to behave like that person so that the person can think that he's like him, mm -hmm. you know, hide a little of his identity. Uh -huh. yeah. Like one like that, 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 that got into a foreign nation and he was a married man and he got into the country and he left his wife in another city and um, he, got to a con he got to another city where he didn't know anybody and met someone on the road wanting to accommodate him, ready to accommodate him. And he called his wife on phone and he says, speak to my sister. That's when you know who is <laughs> it. <laughs> speak, <laughs> speak to my sister, you know. Speak to my <laughs> sister. And every time he calls, and every time he calls his wife, the wife is always calling with a newborn baby. He'll always say, hello, how are you? How are you? I speak to my friend is here that, that accommodated me. Speak to my sister. Imagine. Speak to my sister. Yes. So, 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 so that sister becomes Sarah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, and yeah. he's Abraham now. Yes, yes. Speak oh, to my sister. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some people yeah. do those kind of things when they are in tight corners and they want to the worse, then, then they start to play double games. So if they start to play double games and they can be um, anything just to get anything, mm -hmm. then those kind of people, you, 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 you want to wonder what they will do, to what extent mm. they can go, even after marriage. Mm -hmm. so those are the kind of things that you need to check. You know, um, Is it everybody that is marriageable? That's, that's the question that many people ask. Like me as a young person, before I get married, I got married. Of course, I was afraid because living in the diaspora, sorry for those, um, I mean, if you're not in diaspora, you understand, you may not understand everything that we're talking about, but this is a reality. But you know, the internet is a small world where you hear a lot of 
people lamenting about their experience. And now you know that these, these things happen. So you see many guys in church, in the diaspora, and if you're not careful, you don't know the background of this guy. He moved from maybe Australia to Germany, or he moved from- um, From Spain, Russia. Moved from Spain, Russia. Or, or from Russia, Ukraine. or one of those countries, and he moves maybe to England, right? And you don't know his whole background. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes they hide what they've done in the past because they struggle to stay back in the country. So sometimes they have gotten married, they've had a contract marriage somewhere and they feel that before God, it doesn't really matter, okay? So and this, I'm, I'm telling you this because I know uh, uh, that, I, I see your questions guys, I'm going to come, I'm going to read out the questions of those who have written out um, uh, questions, but let me just finish my line of thoughts. So these, these guys, has gotten married to a lady. And this, this is something that I've experienced that I've been confronted with. And I'm talking, most times we talk from experience. We tell you what we've gone through that were temptations in front of us. And we had to choose, am I going to stand as a Christian? Or am I going to just drop my Christianity for now because I want to get a citizenship? Uh, and later I'll go back to Christ and pick up from wherever I left off. So you see many young people, they will do a contract marriage. And this is what they say to themselves to appease their conscience. Oh no, you know what? It's just before God, God knows that it's just an agreement. We just had an agreement, okay? This is not a marriage of love. But in the sight of God, is it so? If that lady you're getting married to, or that person you're getting married to has never been married before, even though it's a contract marriage, you paid money, you paid 10,000 euros, 10,000 pounds, 10,000 dollars, whatever thousands you have paid. And you get married to that person before an official, automatically before God, you're married. Mm. You because get there married. is a witness. There is a witness. You have already said that you get married. You, you think you are, that means you, you say God knows, but you're trying to deceive men, person that Who is joining you together. Because you say, you know when, Marriage is an oath. You take an oath, right? You take an oath before the person that is joining you. And the person that is joining you says, even before God, I declare these two people man and wife. Mm. So people are in this situation and they're like, oh, I don't know. Am I married or am I not married? married. If both of you have never been married before, you are married. You have been entangled because of papers. You can as well go ahead and make it work. So now, if you, as a girl, you're in another but, city, you don't know this guy from Jack. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Well, let me finish. You don't know this okay. guy from Jack. He comes to the church, fresh, new catch, fresh guy, clean shaved, nice looking. You know, he's been out and then he, he starts to get interested in you. He says he goes to the marriage committee. If you don't do your due diligence, you find yourself in an adulterous relationship. You actually believe in an adultery and not even know. Many years down the road, after you've gotten married, maybe a child is in between, you guys start talking, you start to hear things like, oh, you know, I did a couple of things because situation happened, because life happened, because this happened. And then you're like, what? No, we, we can't do this. We just can't do this. It's not going to work because no, 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 no. And it becomes very complicated. Trust me, when children are, in, are involved, these people, they, they find it difficult to resolve it. It's the now a tangled situation. And you don't even know what to do. You're like, oh my God, I thought I wanted to do this right. I waited for so long. And now look at me in this kind of, I, I can't even, you, can't, you don't even know what to call it. Is this a relationship? Is it a marriage? Is God going to forgive it? And then you see them, you start going for counseling. But you can avoid these things, right? So when we talk about how you can avoid these things, for now, we're just presenting to you what is an unmarriageable man. It's a man that has gotten married before, even though he calls it a contract marriage. That kind of man, sorry, is not uh, marriageable. So David, you had a question, right? While I read the, the other question. Yeah. So um, while you were talking, I was just thinking about um, uh, the 
authenticity of that kind of marriage is it actually a real marriage or is is already a lie because <clears throat> when a marriage starts on a lie does it really count as marriage mm. that's one debate that i've always for example had with different people if something is based on a lie does it really really count as a marriage mm. well okay. now well if you you know today a lot of things have really gone wrong in the reality people are not supposed to have premarital sex now what makes a marriage or what makes what makes you what validates you're taking a vow before people is is consummation that okay. you that you 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 slept with that person as in that you have sexual um yeah um intercourse intercourse with that person mm -hmm. so now if you 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 went to court or something or you or you went before some sets of people and you say you 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 you, you are husband and wife yeah and they joined you together and you now have sexual intercourse it validates it does it yes it yeah, does it's not a court marriage and then how, the how do you the marriage how do it's you the marriage oh you you are saying now because they they are consummated yes. in that relationship it makes it uh a valid marriage yes and that's the that's the danger that's the danger of that's the danger of premarital sex because in the reality what should really authenticate your union to another man or your union to another woman is sexual intercourse mm, i would like to disagree on that one okay you know why well, because the the bible talks about uh fornication and adultery right yeah. so um but then if you're talking about if we are talking about marriage marriage has to be something that publicly people understand that these two are joined together okay so are... if if you explain if you if you if you think that that's that's the case that is publicly publicly everybody considers them to be married but they came publicly before the court or yeah. before the mayor of any yeah. city in as as the as it is done in europe to say I don't know how they, they do it in America. Maybe they, they go to courts too. I think they go to courts too now to legalize it. But in Africa, um, some people go to court. Some people don't even go to court. But once they go to, to present themselves to their families and say, this is the guy I want to get married to, and you pay a bride price, yeah. you are married to that person. You are married, yes. Okay. So are now married let's look at this other scenario, right? This other scenario that happens a lot in diaspora. For example, man in marriage already back home, and he goes abroad and he finds a girl with papers and all that, and then he gets married to her. In the face of the law, is that still a real marriage? In the face of the law, it's not marriage. She's not in the face of the law. The law. In the face in of the law, country. in for example, is he is coming yes. from Zimbabwe. In the face of the law, he came he's a, to. He's a married law. man. Yeah. In the face of the law, he came to the law and he told the law of that nation that he's not married. Even before they marry you in any parts of the world, normally, I don't know about Africa, but in, 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 in Europe and most especially like in France, they will ask you to go and bring a proof of celibacy yeah. from your government to prove that you are really a single person. So yes. for him to be able to marry that lady, Mm -hmm. He brought a fake proof that he's single from yep. his country of origin to be able to marry that lady. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now everything about him is everything about him was falsehood. But oh. in the sight of God, in the sight of the government officials of that nation, mm -hmm. he is married to that person. The God married, he married, he married in that country, whether France or Belgium, whatever, in the sight of the, because he told them that he was never married before. Yeah. But if in the long run, they, re, they, they, they get to realize that he was married, then he, he lied. Normally he's supposed to be, he's supposed to go to court for that. He's supposed to, to, to suffer for lying to the authorities. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. That's if he was married before, right? 
that thief was married before, and in the long run, it comes to their notice that he was married before. Invariably, invariably in, 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 in Europe and in, in, in America, there is no place for polygamy. Yeah, there's yes. no polygamy. Yeah, it's not allowed. No, no place for polygamy, so you will suffer for it. Except maybe for Africa, where it is accepted in some countries for Very polygamy. Okay, so yeah. he can marry many wives, as many as possible. Okay, mm-hmm. but for now, a Christian, the fact that he was married in his country of residence, in his country of origin, oh, from another country. country, to this other country, yeah. even though he, he, he lied to the authorities, that woman that is married to, in let us imagine he came from uh, Ghana and is marrying a lady in, in, in France and was already married in Ghana to a Ghanaian woman and what have you. Yeah. He has paid a bride price and everything he has done in Ghana. That woman is that woman that is living with him in France, not his wife. Yeah, she's not Definitely. his wife. Yeah. In the face uh-huh. of God, yeah, she, she in the in the sight of God, she's not his wife. So they are living in, in adultery. Adultery. That's mm-hmm. correct. Yeah. So mm-hmm. yeah. So let's okay. take one question here. Yes. My question mm-hmm. is saying my question in respect to that's from Mr. James Robert. My question is in respect to the topic, does a man of though he is born again, 43 years old, still marriageable to a younger lady? So, so if I understand the question correctly, yes. this person he is born again, yes. is 43 years old, and is he still marriageable to a younger lady? 100%. If he's not married before, for me, if he has never been married before to anybody anywhere in the world, he's marriageable to whoever he wants to a younger lady, an older lady, whoever a lady that's never been married before is marriageable to her. Yeah, as far as she gives her consent and her parents give their consent, he's marriageable to her. Yeah, the age doesn't matter, even if she's younger. You can even, I mean, it, out here you see people that marry and the couple, the man is like 20 years older than the woman. They're married. They married Macron. Now, of course. Yeah, Macron is the case of Macron is younger than the man here. But this is the case of a man that is older, like say 20 like years. Have right. Donald, okay. Trump, Donald Trump. Donald Trump and Melania. Melania. Yes. Yeah. So if he has never married a man that is 43 years, even 50 years, even 55 years old, and he has never married before, and he decides to marry a 25-year-old, I don't see any, nothing stops them from getting married, really. I know in church, they don't really like it in our church, just because they feel that there is this, there's going to be this, um, this, um, strong, class, strong this strong age yeah, and the difference of the age that maybe they won't be in the same generation and all that. But it doesn't mean that they cannot marry each other. It doesn't mean that a man that is very old, that and the lady cannot, that there's, the marriage cannot take place. Yeah, no. If, if they are okay with each other, and sometimes I even notice that sometimes these marriages, they work fine. They really work fine because <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but men that are older, they're not troublesome anymore, seriously. They just they just want to live a quiet life with the wife. Times have changed. Everything is changing, so I I don't think that's a problem at all. And um, I want us to again touch a bit more about this. Okay, so he says the lady is between twenty two and twenty three, and they've never married before. Yeah, if the lady is twenty two or twenty three and they've never married before, and uh, and the parents yes. She's too yes. young, but if the girl is ready to marry him, it won't define her age. She's trying to marry a 43-year-old at 22. It's their choice. And if they've prayed, and she, me, I always anchor on prayer. I always say, pray about it. Everything can look so nice, so fine, but what does God say about it? So if God, you have peace, you've prayed about it, you, you think that it's okay, you are led to this person and... It's God's will for you guys to be together, to live your life together, to be his partner. Go ahead. Go for it. Go for it. Okay. So it's all about uh, between, the, between the two. If the parents, if the parents of the girl agree also, their consent to. Yes, of course. They'll go through all the process. The parental consent is very important. The consent of the girl is very important. And yes, then, and, and let's and uh, let's be really sure that it's not that the man the 43 year old is um manipulating 
or pressurizing the young lady of 22, that she of her own will accepts fully that she's all fine to be with him at 43. Yeah. It's no big deal. And if she loves him, he yeah. loves her, they have prayed, they have prayed, they think that they are good together, they're good together, good together. I was even watching something on, on YouTube the other day of a of a young a woman that said she met a man of maybe he was he was 72 or so when he married her and she was mm. 45 or something like that. Now the man is 100 Whoa. and she's 55. Yes. Whoa, 50 years different? 55 and she's That's 100 and the man is 100. Okay. 100. Well, well. anyway, they are both old, so they understand each other. <laughs> they understand each other. So I don't think that's a problem. That's not... And you should, but that's weird. That's not the general. It's, it's, not, it's, not. Yes, it's weird. But if 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 it is of her own volition, and what about what about people? We have various examples. Maybe we do not have many examples of people that we can point to. Maybe in church or in the Christian dome that we know very clearly that this um this man is far older than. Okay, for example, you had um um pastor um Bim, uh, bimbo Lukoya, uh, Udukoya. yes Udukoya's uh, husband the pastor he got married to the other the south african woman she was quite old, younger than him yeah. she was not she was not very close in age to him the the last yeah. the third the third woman that he married that also passed the pastor. The second woman second woman okay yeah. yeah the second woman he married a pastor she she, yeah. she she was old, he was older than he was older than her, but they, they had a, a fine marriage by all that we see. Yeah. They had a fine marriage, and the woman was happy yeah. uh, being with yeah. him. So it's possible to get married to someone that you are you're quite far, far um older oh, yeah. than if, no. if you are ready to treat her well, yes. you're ready to respect her as your wife, mm -hmm. you're ready to listen to her opinions because you're the one that chose her. And she chose you, she accepted. Yes, ready to listen to our opinion. Yeah. You're not going to think that she's a child, she's a baby, yeah. keep quiet. What are you talking about? I'm older than you. Mm -hmm. Once you get married to a woman, whatever age you are, you are mm -hmm. almost the same age. You become partners. And then you get to mm -hmm. her age bracket. You have to respect her. She's a small child. You are as old as being a father. That's your choice. You have to respect her. <laughs> Yeah, when yes. well, marriage is an equalizer, they say. Yes. I've heard of yes. people say marriage is an equalizer. As soon as you marry me, I'm no longer that small girl that you know your 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 lead your youth. I become your wife, your partner. <laughs> so that's the that's the that's the downside of it. So, so you have so, to be ready so. to, to accept it. Yeah. So I hope we answer that question for you, Mr. James. And mm -hmm. please um if your questions come in, I'm, I'm just looking at my phone here by the side to make sure that I see your questions, your comments, your contribution. And um, yeah, and so don't forget to like, to like, let's see the stars and... Yeah, and share oh, the yeah. videos too, please. Don't Let them share the videos, yeah. Sure. Share the videos to invite your friends to come watch and yeah. to drop your comments too. And let's know what you'll say about this very important topic. A lot of things are happening for most, especially for those of us, for those that are in the diaspora, a lot of things are happening. A lot of so things. I, I, I want us to talk about some of these things. Now let's, let's dive into uh, another side of it, which, um, uh, which covers health. Now for, for a man health wise, what makes him unmarriageable? Um, in my opinion, I believe a man that is not mentally stable shouldn't get married because marriage takes a lot of wisdom, takes a lot of organization, planning ahead. If you are the type that is not really mentally stable, okay. um, you cannot, you shouldn't look at marriage just yet until you have been able to get some help. Now, when you're so talking many... about mentally stable, are you talking about one that has, for example, that has a, that had a malformation 
um, uh, because like, for example, here in, in, here, um, here in Europe, you see people that maybe have autism or, you know, people that have autism, even up to their older age, even as adults, they still need help. The, the so cannot... the thing is with autism, I, I hear you, I hear you. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, autism is not really, there are certain medical conditions that you can get help and get well and be able to get married. Uh, yeah, so that's why I said people. you shouldn't marry when you are not stable mentally yet. If you have autism, there are so many autistic people that are married and have a wonderful marriage. It's just about learning how to deal with that condition, yeah. right? Yeah. That's why I said, first of all, if you know, let's say, for example, in, 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 um, in a lot of places, they don't understand um, different types of mental uh, deficiencies. Like, for example, if, if you're a guy that is very, very hot-headed, there's probably something wrong with you. Every little thing, you are very angry, you can break things, you can... You can destroy the whole place. Mm -hmm. That is something that you need to check and see. Maybe you have a childhood trauma that you need to mm -hmm. deal with before um, you became older, right? Mm -hmm. And some of these girls, they don't, they don't, some of these sisters, they don't recognize that until it's too late, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, it's better for you to not take somebody's daughter when you're not ready for, for, um, to, to manage yourself as a person. Mm. I remember I had a friend, very, very, very nice guy, mm. right? A very nice guy. If you see him, every woman wants to get married to him. He's looking nice. He has money. But then he has a very, very, very hot temper. Mm. And speaking to him for a long time, I realized that this guy has some daddy issues, right? Yes, he has some scores to settle with his father, which he has not been able to settle it because he has this trauma from his childhood. Okay. And um, he's been fighting with this past experience he had with his dad, yeah. which makes him very angry at things, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I advised him that he needs to really sit down with his father and tell him how his father has hurt him and let him talk it out and get healed from it before he can get married. Because... He was dating a very nice lady at some point and um, he lost it during their relationship wow. um, and the lady had to back down because the guy was too hot for her right um, and that really hurt him a lot because he felt betrayed he felt uh, he felt why would she do this to me um such I've done this for her we have been together for this long yeah. But I just told him, bro, I understand how you feel, but at the end of the day, it's not something that you can really control. It's just an experience that you've brought from your childhood. But you need yeah. to deal with it. If you don't deal with it, you cannot move past it. Yeah. Right? This is what... What, you're, what you're saying is that even as a child of God, even someone that has given his or her life to Christ, um, needs to look for professional help, psychological Definitely. professional help, yes. when he's not able to go past some uh, baggage. baggage in his life. Mm -hmm. that, we're not, that we don't hear very, very, very frequently. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't hear, they, they will always say you just, after you have given your life to Jesus, Jesus can clean up everything and you really not, do not ever need to speak about that challenge in your mm -hmm. childhood days mm -hmm. or that way your dad always treated your mom that hurt you. I was listening to the windows and mm -hmm. the guy was talking about the struggles he had with her. And she's talking about her struggles of how sometimes she had to speak, I speak it out to herself. My marriage is not going to break. I'm not going to break my marriage. Yeah. And this I and talk that. about Willow like, Smith? No. Willow Smith. They are, they are um, they oh, okay, okay. Okay. It's a couple. Okay. It's a couple. And they do some skits like that and they act right. on face. Yeah. Sure. 
So um, the, 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 the thing is, what you're saying is very, very, very deep and very per pertinent in the sense that many a times we have not, and even the older generation, you know that we, we understand, we can speak from that point of view because of our, our own, uh, what we have been exposed to and our background. So the older generation, you know, we never had, I cannot ever remember any time that daddy taught, told us that you need to go to, to see a psych, psychologist or you need to look for medical help because, mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, it's deep. It means that you, 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 are, you, what you're saying, are you thinking, do you think that a child of God, someone that has given his or her life to Christ, a brother that has given his life to Christ and he just noticed that he's always angry. Mm -hmm. But you know, there is this thing, you, you need to forgive now. What, what hinders him from forgiving his, his father that hurt him? Well, he says he forgives, but his action, it, it points to a different direction. It doesn't reflect what he's saying. So that means that sometimes it's not even about him wanting to forgive or it's not even about the forgiveness part of it it's about him having the feeling that his dad understands his feeling he has not received that from his father yet that okay this is how i felt when i was younger yeah so there are questions that have not been answered yeah yet. so he needs i told him until you go past this and he agreed that he would have that conversation i need to check back with him to see if he had that conversation yeah. but Every time, also his father is something similar to him, hot-headed, right? Every yeah. time he tries to have that kind of conversation, his father like just walks out and Lights. gets angry, right? So, but his mom always have to always remind his father. So, but then I told him, you have to come to a point where you need to tell your father, if you still want to be in my life, you need to, we need to have this conversation. If yeah. not, we cannot yeah. continue because you are really, messing up my mind right he needs to open up in that way because him himself is a bit too egoistic he doesn't want to feel like he is trapped vulnerable. He's, he's vulnerable because he's a strong guy right so but that vulnerability is very very important for him to go past it he needs to really open up he tell he talks to his mom about it he, he speaks to his mom openly because he feels like his mom will hear him out and his mom is not pompous and uh, egoistic right but on his father's side he loves his dad though it's just that little um thing that he feels that he needs to go past it and unfortunately even as a christian we always think that um jesus christ has done everything on the cross therefore we we don't have our own parts to play i mean as much as Jesus Christ has poured out the grace available to every one of us, we still have a part to play in keeping our uh, mental health in place. If you don't eat the right food, you're going to get sick. Why are we not looking at our brain the same way? Mm -hmm. You know, you if you eat rubbish, if you eat sugar every day, oh, definitely you, you fall sick, even as a Christian. So yes. does it mean that the grace of God has departed? No, it has not departed. The grace of God is abundant, but you refuse to take care of yourself. Yes. It's the same thing with the brain. The brain yeah. is a living organ. Yeah. If you don't if you don't take care of your brain, then you will you will become sick, obviously, yeah. mentally. And the worst part is that nobody sees it. It's only when things happen that the PTSD reveals itself. There is always a trigger. A trigger happens, boom, you see the, uh, the symptoms of the deep-rooted problems, yeah. right? So that's, that's one aspect of, of the health. Another... Yeah, I just want to add this. Okay. Um, there is this person there's this guy that i've listened to i can't remember who exactly said that two broken people cannot come together and have a whole marriage so before you come to create a whole complete marriage you, you need two whole people two people who have dealt with their brokenness 
right? Because if one person is broken and the other person is whole, then there's going to be a dysfunctionality, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's going to be a dysfunctional relationship. The other one doesn't understand the place of brokenness of this person because he has not dealt with that person. Sometimes it kind of overflows into the present, into your relationship. And sometimes the man is going to be reacting to you and you're like, okay, but what did I do? I didn't do anything. Exactly. He's just reacting, overreacting from his own hurt, his own pain, and whatever it is that he's dealing with in his own, like in his, in his own privacy, like in, in him that he has not dealt with. So, in this kind of situation, this person, this man needs to go and make his peace with his dad, get all the questioned answers answered, and then he'd be able to come healed. That healing needs to take, take place. If there is no healing, emotional healing from him, then he would be struggling. Let's say, for example, he struggled with um, experiencing the love of his dad. And this is something that he's struggling with. He wants his dad to love him, but he's not finding it. He's not getting it. This kind of person in this instance will be struggling to give out love in its entirety. And sometimes you see those guys, they say, no, you know what? I don't want to have a child. Mm -hmm. Because they feel that they don't want to put another child through what they are going through. That's right. Okay. So this, it has to be a process where he deals with his past. He deals with his, his disappointment with his dad. He deals with um, whatever it is, the, the unloving relationship he had with his dad, why his dad behaved the way he behaved. And sometimes the dad did not even know what he was doing to his, his son. He doesn't even know how he was hurting his own son. But there should be that place of conversation. And after they have had that conversation, this guy will now come with answered questions questions answered his brain he doesn't like have so many but why but why but why this but why that and making him feel maybe unworthy maybe on man enough so mm -hmm. you know these kind of things they're little little things some things that happen in a boy's past comes back to haunt him in his adulthood and that little boy is still in a cage inside of the man then you can't you kind of struggle with that kind of um, that kind of husband, right? So, sorry, we're going into a little of psychology here. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's getting real deep. Yeah. So, but yeah, that's it, anyways. All right. So, uh, another, another thing about health, I wanted to uh, talk about. So now, the I would also say that mm -hmm. for such right. a guy, that for example, let's imagine he he had. He, 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 he had this bad, terrible past. Oh, he's broken, all broken in words. I never had the love of a father. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now this lady meets him and she's left to him and she, 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 she marries, she decides that she wants to marry him. I think that, for example, if the father that helped in making him to become this broken man, yeah. Uh, this and that father is no more. It's no more alive. As at yeah. the time when this, as at the time when this, 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 this adult, this young man wants to get married. You see, yeah. he still carry. He still with his baggage. Yeah. He's still with his baggage. And the woman that you are, uh, you want to jump to his rescue. You want yeah. to come to help him. Yeah. You want to mend him. You, you think you can mend him? You can mend this broken man. You can. Yeah, but it takes a lot of love. You can. You definitely can. You can. You can. You can, but you need to know his possible. history. You need to have need to the conversation. History, the background mm -hmm. story. And when you know the you background story. You need to story, that, 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 that must be open. There must be open conversation. Yes. 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 And that's the place of courtship, Christian dating, knowing each other, you know, talking. That's what, those are the frank talks that couples should be having before they get married. So that you know what you're getting into. You're going in wide, eyes wide open. And then you mm -hmm. know your own place, you know your own responsibility, you know the commitment of, you know, sometimes it might look like he's unloved. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. It's just the ghost of his past that is coming to haunt him. And so you just need to be more loving, more tender, more you know, soothing, more feminine. So you don't take it personally. Like everything that he does, does it, you don't take it personally because you know where this guy is coming from. You know his place. You know where it's the place of earth that he's coming from. And you are there to now be like his support system to help him to continue to be the best part of him. And with time, 
healing takes place. Healing takes time, right? So, and if there's need for you guys to go and get help or counseling, then you guys can go as a couple and then, you know, do this counseling and help your man to be the best version of himself. Yeah, and, I, I, and also, <clears throat> I just wanted to add, uh, aside from um, the mental health, also we talk, we, the man needs to also be considered in terms of peace, dealing with like an uncurable disease, right? He needs to be very um, open about it so that mm -hmm. the woman is about to get married doesn't come and just marry into trouble that she not she she's not aware about mm -hmm. and she's not ready to deal with right yeah. Yeah. so if for example in your past life before you became a christian you um you caught some stds or some serious things like that then you you need to be very open about it you need to let the woman know that this is what i'm facing it doesn't even need to be STDs. it can be like maybe you have um it you can have be, uh, have erectile problems, dysfunction you can well, have erectile dysfunction is a very serious issue and you don't hide those kind of things yeah <laughs> seriously <laughs> you don't hide those kind of things well you know in church people a lot of people they are not comfortable even about no but the marriage committee will ask you so if the man doesn't yeah. say up front and he tells a lie to the marriage committee then i don't know that's but you know that don't you think that there are some guys that don't even know they have erectile erectile function don't you think that there are some guys that may not even know they have mal for any 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 don't you think so it's isn't it possible yeah it's possible it's possible well, but, i'm not a medical uh, doctor so i don't really that would be very difficult to we we'll have to uh, get the medical doctor to tell us if if okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't well, but it's difficult for a guy that is old enough not to know that he doesn't have, uh, he has erectile dysfunction because naturally when you wake up in the morning as a guy, you are supposed to have some erection. If you don't have that or sometimes even if you look at a woman and um, you have some certain type of feeling, you know that, okay, you are well functioning. You are okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. This that you have just said now is going to make some people to think that it's right for them to. No, I'm not saying that you should go about and be lost out for everybody. But but there are some women that you know that, for example, you as a person, um, you started liking, you started having a lot of interaction, and you having some chemical reactions happening within you. That means you're all right. If you don't have no chemical reaction happen within you and you want to marry somebody, then you, uh, my bro, you need to check yourself because <laughs> you might be a problem to the sister, you know? So um, I know a lot of people think that it's just, oh, once you have some type of feeling, yo, you need salvation. That's not mm -hmm. true. Somebody that somebody that does not have some, some certain type of rush of feelings within themselves about a sister is about to get married to, <laughs> that is problem yeah. it's not possible so that's that's that mm -hmm. then um i want us to also cover so now let me ask bit. you if he has had such mm -hmm. a feeling it's towards that that sister that he felt he wanted to marry to and he he now is in courtship and then during the courtship he doesn't work what just during the courtship is what you're muted is he meant to do you, you, you said think during the courtship? Can you ask yes, the during the courtship. Okay. Um, what and happened? you said that you must have some you're muted again. You say you must have some uh, chemical feelings or what are you? And mm. uh, if he does not, if he does not, he should go and check himself. Is that not so you do yeah. So invariably, yes. I'm now saying that if they have, if such a thing has happened, then they should not continue. If they they think they are not they are not meant to be with each other, or it cannot work, um, should they feel they should, must they marry because she has had such such a feeling? Are you saying that uh, because he has such a feeling, you, sh you shouldn't marry the sister, or you're saying that because he doesn't have such feeling, you shouldn't marry the sister? 
no, you are saying that if he doesn't have such a feeling, he should not marry because he he may not have um uh that that's that's his uh, a red flag. Is that not what you're saying? Yeah, I'm saying because sometimes um people just they are not aware about themselves, right? Just yeah. like a lot of I don't want to talk about sisters today is about brothers, but for men it is almost impossible for you not to have a kind of feeling for the sister you are about to get married to. Are you serious? Yeah, no, that's ha. impossible. That is not possible. Yeah. Most brothers are already imagining how they are going to be with their sister. Ah, let's be real now. Yeah, let's be real. They are actually anticipating. Yeah, of course. Like they Men are anticipating the night. Love, right? They are anticipating the night where they will unveil, you know, their sister. So, if he's not having that feeling, I mean, I mean, how are you going to? You, that means maybe something is medically wrong with you. Maybe you need okay. to check well, it. Either it's medically wrong with him, or it does. He's not in love with her. It's not. Or something. it's not in love with her. Not in love with her. So what? What's in that marriage for? Right. Yeah, exactly. What is he doing there? Do you think do you, do you think that um it's not Paul? Invariably, okay. Is it a thing that 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 he, he develops? Okay, because he's in love with her, that's the reason why he will have a feeling for her. Okay. From a man's perspective, let's ask let's ask David. David, tell us, do you think that a, a man can be do you grow in love? Can you be in a relationship with a with a woman and not love her at all and think that you're going to be growing into the love? I don't think that's possible. Uh no, that's not. See, men generally we we love we love different different things, but if that um attraction is not really there, of course you can have it um later on, but if you don't have that little bit of something, something, then there is, it's not connecting. Yeah. You have problem. You not be happy with the woman. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me make it very, very plain. You will not be very, very satisfied in terms of the consummation as a man. If you don't, it will be oh, like it will become like to become like oh, it's work. I need to make it happen because of her, you know. So it's not as if you are really enjoying your marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that usually happens to I would say that usually happens to um, guys that have been with many women, right? And it really happens to a virgin guy because he doesn't know how to feel he doesn't know what it feels like <laughs> right and um, but but guys that have really really been with many women mm -hmm. they come they become a certain way that if they don't have um that sort of uh attraction with that woman they will not really enjoy being with that woman in terms of um their sexual okay. relationship but okay. they they might love the woman in every other way but right? they will not that's a danger no. that's a danger zone thing yes so 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 the woman might not even know this thing but him as a guy he knows he knows he knows and the woman might not even notice it <laughs> right because mm. he has a lot of experience and he knows what to do to make her happy in that sense but she but how long can it stay like that yeah so that's a problem right that's a problem and because how long can you play a game of i mean I well the, the, uh, men that are married in that scenario is because maybe they are trying to gain something else maybe the woman okay. has a lot of money maybe the relationship woman yeah it's is a certain way so they are trying mm -hmm. to gain something else right a finance else. game okay that right? you need so, okay. so they are looking at other benefits. They're not looking at the woman as a woman, as the person that they really. But you know, people evolve, right? With age, with time, with experiences, he might change to actually okay. love her because 
she also has evolved herself, right? She, obviously, she's not going to be the same person in marriage. She's going to, over time, she's going to learn certain things and she's going to obviously understand that, oh, my, my husband is acting this way. Oh, that's, that's not right, you know? And obviously, maybe also she will go through some training, she will read some books, she will learn a lot of things, and she get to know that, bro, you need to be honest with me, what's going, what's happening, yeah. <laughs> right? So you can only hold it for as long as you oh, can, yeah. but, but it's a danger for a brother to do that because you will just be putting yourself in a prison which you cannot get out of, right? Mm. So that's what I'm saying. It yeah. can be a problem. It's better you marry the person that um, you you are attracted to, at least a little bit. It, the other attraction can grow over time. Mm. So that that's that's just it. And this thing I'm telling you is a big deal for men, especially women. Might not understand how serious it is, but for men, it's very, very, very serious. <laughs> Yeah. You know, so it's just like how women you, you, you take communication at a very, very high standard, right? If the guy does not know how to treat you right like a woman, is a problem for you. Yeah. Same thing for men. So I just the reason why I'm talking about this in a very plain language is because some brothers might not see how serious it can get. Mm -hmm. Especially um when other men are smiling about their wife right so <laughs> um that's 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 it now I, I want us to also talk about the final part of it yeah final. so if, if any one of you that is watching us please let us know where you're watching from do well to let us know where you're watching from and we're so happy to see all of you guys that are here thank you so much remember to share this video place your comment ask your questions some people have been asking their question please do well to ask your question Place your comment, share a like, an emoji. Let us know that um, you can hear us clearly. You understand what we're talking about. Anything that's not clear, please do well to let us know. Yeah, hi. I can see Rom's Messi from Zambia. Thank you for connecting from Zambia. Zambia. So happy to have you here. Nice. So every one of you that are watching from somewhere, wherever it is you're watching from, from Africa, from South Africa, North Africa, um, Central Africa, wherever. Yeah. North America, Europe, let us know where you're watching from and so that we can accept Australia. Your, your presence, Australia, and everywhere you're calling from, Canada, everywhere. We want to see you. I'm from, I'm calling you, I'm connecting live from Canada, and we have other people from, um, and our other hosts from Europe, France, and um, we are all connecting from different parts like that. So please let us know where you're com connecting from. Yeah, so, and as you can see the topic, this topic has been a very interesting one. Some people have asked their questions. So if you're just coming in, we're just telling you, you can ask your questions and we'll be very happy to answer your questions. Yeah, so we're talking about the finance aspect. Yes. And so, unmarriageable. Unmarriageable, yeah, unmarriageable finance. Marriages. Yeah, finance. so now we're talking about the finance part. Financially. That was crucial, crucial, crucial. <laughs> For me, very Why you emphasize the crucial? Well, it's true though. It's true though. I, I mean, a lot of it's a lot crucial. Of, a lot of men. Have been, a lot of men have been slacking these days. I, I must say the truth. It looks like women are like on their toes these days. Like women are, are really hustlers these days. So our brothers, we need to step up our game. I, I just have to say this. And um, it will be unfair to not um, place yourself in a position where you can really take care of your family, mm. right? If you are uh, a lazy man, let me put it that way. Lazy man, let me define lazy man. A man that sit down in his house and be praying and thinking mm. that money will come to him as a lazy man. Hmm? God, me, I always say to people, they always say, by the grace of God, this will happen, that will happen. I say, now lie. What grace of God? Grace of God has already been done 2,000 years ago. And it's abundant today, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Grace of God is always abundant. Yeah. 
yeah. you cannot finish the grace of God, you as a person. Mm. So you can't be telling me by the grace of God. Without doing anything. God has, God has, has done his own part. Now is you, is by your effort. Yeah. Right? Your so yeah. for, for our brothers out there, there are so many ways to make money. So don't give the excuse that, oh, I have nothing else to see. If you have to pack shit, go and pack it and make that money. All right. <laughs> there is no shame in labor. If you need to pack yeah. shit, forget about the degrees that you think you have. Degrees doesn't mean a lot anymore as it used to be. Yeah. There are so many ways to make money. We are in the um, information century. age information economy yeah right and we are even almost going to get out of information economy this uh in in few years and we are going to go into more of insight economy very soon right yes. so right now you're in the information economy information is available everywhere if you don't know yeah. how to look for things things are available anything you want to learn anyone anything you want to do you can easily get it so don't go and be um, lazy about and thinking that by the grace of God, that job will come to you or this thing will come to you. No, no. Oh, no. Uh, those, those guys that will say, I'm seeing it by feet. By feet. Hmm. I was speaking to you by feet. Doesn't yeah. have it. He's in, he's in, it comes to courtship. It's not, doesn't have the money and he's telling her that I have it already. By the grace of God. But that's not true. If yes, a certain amount, you don't say you don't have it. So the, 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 there should be, we should put place our spiritual um confession in perspective, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean the point is the, the, the point is that anybody can be anything now in this age. COVID has given us that opportunity. COVID had its lows, it also had its highs. It brought a lot of virtual jobs. There's a lot of yes. jo virtual jobs now. You can mm -hmm. find something, you can work from your home for any country and any company. Once you have what it takes, you can Skills. have what it takes. There is opportunity to train. You can learn coding now from your house. Just yep. connect with a teacher. Where in mm -hmm. India, in Pakistan, anywhere the teacher is available, you pay online and then you have your teacher teaching you how to code. And before you know it, you can code. You can learn how to design. You can learn, I don't know, you can learn a lot of things. You can teach. If you're a teacher, you can, you can, can transfer your skills market. of teaching into creating a course. And then people can buy from you. So, but if you have to be in, innovative, you have to be willing to learn. Many people, the problem is that they're not ready to learn. Mm -hmm. They're not ready to come out of their comfort zone. They're always saying, I don't know, I don't know. No, I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't know how to do it, or I don't have this. They're always seeing the impossibility. So mm -hmm. now there's no more so much place for lazy people anymore because people are ready to go out there and do what it takes, the godly way to make an ends meet. Right? Mm -hmm. You can take care of your family, but you have to learn, you have to start from somewhere. Yep. Some of us, all our ideas stay in our head. We never go out. You need to get out of your head and put your ideas into action, start, however it is, just start small, put in the passion into that small that you're starting, and the result will come, will come forth. Definitely, because already you have God on your side anyway, so, yeah. um, and because you have God on your side, he's going to be guiding you as you're moving, as you're taking actions, Yeah. right, and um, I just want to just add this, that there are some brothers, they have already some amount they have some resources but they still find they still look at themselves as not marriageable because mm. they've not attained a certain goal but that is not also right because sometimes um you just need enough and then god will bring yeah. your help meet to take you to that Amen. other level right there are some and cases the uh, enough the enough is determined mm. by the system if the sister says it's enough, why is it enough? It's enough. No, no, no. Exactly. It's I mean, you tell you come to the woman the way you are. What yeah. determined by her? How I want to marry you. It's determined by her. What I have. Yeah. Because this is this is just a plain thing. It's not about. I mean, let's let's people should stop this. I can't get married because sisters nowadays don't want to marry this kind of. You always find a girl. You find a girl. I would like you. Your I would be okay with you 
with your I'm financial condition. Girl with you. you have to have it all. Now, let's stop this. Many women, some women want to marry very glamorously. There is the a guy for that. that the there is a guy for that. <laughs> there is a guy that will, there is, there is a guy that can fool those bills. That, 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 that can afford it. But there are, how yes. many guys meet up to the imagination of women? Um, so, so that's, so, that's for the, the, the point is that let's not talk about women today. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let's talk about men. So we're talking about men. The point is that I me, mean, I'm just telling men that if you have something, if you have money that can feed you, that can mm -hmm. feed another person, if you can feed two people with your salary, you have you a roof, you can get married and you have a roof, you have a home, you have a little house, maybe a two bedroom flat, and you maybe have a car. You don't even have a car. Or even a studio. You don't have to have it. Well, even if you have a studio, really, seriously, you have a nice sister studio. says, I'm fine with your studio. Okay, You're we need going to make it work. Just let her know that, okay, this is my situation. My point is that don't hype anybody. Exactly. Don't hype anybody. Don't try to step into any shoes. Don't try to be like another brother that is living another kind of life. Just be yourself. That is living on the eye. Like those girl. like Nigeria that is no, living on Lex Penusilizer. Yeah, yeah, you always find a girl yeah, exactly. that will marry you the way you are, that will be mm -hmm. ready to build with you. That's right. So just come to that point, but be open. Tell the girl, this is how much I earn. I'll be able to feed you. I'll be able to afford this studio we're living in. And these are the things that I'm doing. I believe that where we are today is not where we're going to be in the next five mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. We're going somewhere. These yeah. are the courses I'm taking. These are the effort I'm taking, but I think that, I mean, I'm this age and I think that we should start our family yep. because the Bible says, when I find a woman, you bring favor to me and we work mm. together and we'll be able yep. to build something better. That's so right. Once you have that, you're not lazy, you're out, you're going, you're not sitting down and daydreaming and just staying on that prayer, prayer from one prayer station to another and you're shaking your head, you're shaking your head, but you're not ready to go out. You're waiting for manna to come from heaven. We are not in the wilderness. There is no manna coming from anywhere. You have to go out there, put in some effort, do something so that you heck, will be able to heck you are the manna. You are the manna, in, in, in fact, because God gave you life. Yeah, it's in God your hands. You just like God told exactly. Moses, what's in your hand? You have the rod. That thing is in your hand. You just need God to bless the work of your hands. And then I believe that this year we're going to have people stepping out in faith and don't be afraid please brothers don't be afraid of sisters don't be afraid you don't know until you ask that's right you don't know you don't know no matter how tush that sister looks she might just be waiting for you to ask seriously yeah so right. please just you are, go them, you are giving a lot of ask. them you are giving them you are giving this brother no I'm, I'm just this is real this is real talk keeping it real keeping yes it real. I'm, I'm being real i'm not being i'm not trying to be I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything or make anybody feel good. I'm just, okay. I like to live in a real world. I'm a realist. I live in a real world. I tell myself, this is life. And how do I look at life? So the point is that me as a girl, I had my own standard, but there, did I have, did I, that's some men that I cast out that, no, 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 I can never marry this one. Yeah. Of course, based on my own spiritual stance and all that, and honesty and all those kind of things. But I was not so focused on his finance. He must have this much. He must have this salary. He must have this kind of car. He must have this kind of status. He must be. Dead. But you had your minimum. You had your minimum. What I want to see, I want to see a man that is ready to make life with me. Mm hmm. Right? I don't like to live in fantasy. Some people are waiting for a prince that will come from a castle, that will take them to a castle. Okay, that's for women. We're not talking about women today. But let's stop women. this deceiving ourselves. I always say this thing, and I always I keep saying it over and over again. These men that you want to marry, they were fellow young men that many of them, you all went to school together. You studied together. So why are you mm -hmm. thinking that if you have not been able to do so, so, so much, with all your efforts. And you see another man that is really making efforts and you are expecting him to create magic. No, let's stop this thing. Let's be real and straight on. If you think that this guy that's making, making this much effort is not good for you, please 
just brother move on she's not the one for you bless the lord hallelujah she's not the one for me this one is going to be trouble for me because she's she, she doesn't fit me she's going to be too tight or too big so get a cloth that fits you go on to yes. another person. don't sweat don't sweat over it i'm just going to be very it might be dismissive some sisters might not like what i'm saying but don't sweat it brother move on she says she don't want to marry she's waiting for a bologna let her sit there and be waiting for the bologna mm. you move on if she gets her bologna oh god hallelujah yeah but, but even man. even the brother even the brother okay he's she's too sh she's too she's living she's too sh she's living maybe in um she has a job or she's she has yeah. a life and she tells you this is what she wants and she you you cannot you cannot give her that type of life that's not me to now, now is he if the brother comes to propose to her right yeah. and she says no i cannot marry you because i have this life you don't have that life okay well i'm good that's your problem you move on my i'm talking to brothers today today we're talking to brothers so i don't care what yes. sister. we're not talking about sisters today we're talking about brothers yes. if yes. she thinks that she's too she has this class and she cannot mm -hmm. come down to your class and she say your class oh brother don't sweat it no. there's another sister that is your class that, that wants you that will appreciate you the way you are don't sweat don't see don't cry over spilt milk Mm. Marriage is for peace of mind and happiness. If you stick your neck into a sister that will never be content with what you have, will never be content with you, will never be satisfied with you, you are going, you are in for trouble. You will never be, she will never be happy. Yep. Because she will continue That's... to compare you to I don't know what. And you mm -hmm. cannot transform into that thing. You are progress, you are on a you are in progress, a journey towards achieving what you want to get to. She won't be ready to wait for you to get to evolve into what God has for you. She's going to be mm -hmm. a heartache to you. Don't crack your head. That's right. Move on. Move on. Just and move God on will give life. you the right person. God will give you the right person, the best person that will give you peace of mind. And you'll be like, oh my God, where have you been? That's right. And because of that peace of mind, that's when you even blow. Yeah. Because you, you can past. think you right. Prosper, you, you move know, on. She's there to support. She's your, your backbone. Like you guys are doing it together. She's not just there like, oh, look at that person. Did you see that guy? He now is driving Range Rover. And the other person is driving Mercedes. We are still driving this Toyota. Eh? We are still driving the Toyota. You are still, I'm still living in this kind of house. <laughs> trouble. This is trouble, my brother. Don't stick your or head. In fact, if, you, have or in fact, if you're a type that does this boss train yeah right and this is like nah i can't i can't i can't join you on a train i i can't do that with you this is the kind of my advice bro, i'm to my move. brothers heart to heart this there, is an heart to heart there, there are sisters that will be on the train she should, she should move eh? she should move yes he should, he should move he should move. Should move. He should move that's right because at the end of the day when you get in front of that church in the front of the pastor what you're going to say in your vows is for better for worse yeah that do what part right yeah. so if it's for better for worse does it mean that i have to be in the range rover hmm? i don't need to be in the range rover right yeah so uh but, but in all seriousness uh finance is one big part that really breaks marriages cool. and a lot yeah. of people take it for granted yeah. and i hope that after hearing this today you're going to rethink that sister that you're about to get married. I know she's very pretty. Mm -hmm. I know she's very nice. Mm -hmm. I know um, she <laughs> seems like the woman that you want to show to your mama. But uh, if she's going to be a problem for you in the next 50 years of your life or 20 yeah. years of your life, um, you better run for your life because there is more fishes out there. To use but you know that you know that sometimes they know they know already as if um obina was here he would tell you that the first few minutes you know that this can't work why do you stick your head why stick your head in something yeah. that don't cannot stick work your head. don't That's stick your head them. we're advising don't them your head, don't don't stick your head. <laughs> she's not happy don't stick your head yeah don't stick your head at all during so, consciousness, well, complaining, complaining, don't just move on. Okay, yeah. So that's I, that. I think I think we can talk a lot more. I mean, there are so many other areas that we can cover, but I just felt like these three things 
mm -hmm. is the top thing that is, is one of the top uh, things that a man should consider before getting married because yeah. those three things can actually derail a lot of things in a marriage. Yeah. And the other things are complementary, right? Mm -hmm. um, so my brother, pray and pray through and make sure you, you you know that this is that for you and also look within right make sure you 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 identify any problems that you might have that will affect your marriage because at some point you're going to be a father right and you don't if you're not going to be proud of a son that will act like you then i guess you should rethink the way uh, you are and get help if you have um, some mental um, traumas get professional help professional help does not mean that you go to a doctor you can just go to uh, your pastor your pastor might be able to um, walk you through your mental your pastor uh, some pastors trauma. may not help you some a lot, of pastor, a lot of pastors will not have that kind of knowledge but i'm saying like for example, if you notice that your pastor is very knowledgeable in terms of um, speaking about um, things to do with well-being of your mind and all that, it can help, right? Um, so consider the, 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 main, the main thing I just want to say is that you need to get help and the help can come from different places. It yeah. doesn't necessarily have to be a, a doctor. Yeah. right there are some people that are naturally gifted as at, at uh, healing people um mental traumas yeah. right there are some people i've met some people that you feel really deep hurt and when you speak to them you just feel like oh there is a weight that has been lifted because they walk you through the process there's a process at which you can go through and you go past that trauma that block mm -hmm. right it's the same thing it applies even to money there are some people that money they can't they don't believe that they can make certain type of money until they get to talk to some people and then they open up their mind they remove that block that mental block right and then they become free so uh I, i'm just trying to summarize here um also if you know that for you you are not medically sound your own feet as a man uh, you shouldn't look at marriage if you are financially not ready please uh be honest about it also remember that there's, there is every sister for every financial level right <laughs> <laughs> just find the sister that fits your financial level fine sure thank you, you very it. much fine always look for <laughs> fine don't go above <laughs> make sure fine. you make sure you you have a roof over your head you have you're not way. living in your father's house <laughs> a way to get income you're not living in your father's house <laughs> all right in your so father's after house that. you're with some friends <laughs> and you don't have the you don't have the you don't have uh, the money to even pay the first year's house rent for those that are paying yearly salary yearly yeah. house rent you don't have the first house rent. You say God will provide. In the law will God provide. God provided it two thousand years ago. And you're waiting for the gift <laughs> from marriage. What, yes, how, how much the gift you? from your from your wedding. You are wedding waiting day. on the gift. The monetary gift they are going to give to you to be able to live on that monetary gifts. Mm, that's not or sustainable. The contribution of all your family members put together that our younger brother is getting married. We need to contribute for him to be able to get married. He doesn't have any, he doesn't even have enough savings, but he's getting married. But as you have said, marry your level. Very important. Too. Yes. Don't go and marry somebody that is above your level. No, 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 no. Don't chew what you cannot chew. No, 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 no. Don't bite what you cannot chew. Don't bite what you cannot chew. No. Don't take anything that will hook you. No. Mm -hmm. Don't put your egg where you now. Nah. No, no, no. So no. if 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 you, I I want us to um also let people know that we are going to be talking about the women version of this uh, yeah. on the next one, 
And if you are blessed by this session, please write a comment. Share it to somebody that needs to hear this. All you sis, I know that this, this conversation is something that you really love. You should share it to that brother that you're eyeing, you know, that guy that you, you want to, you want to, you want him to, to, to make the move, right? Send it to him so he knows. <laughs> or send it to your friend, send it to your friend that um, is looking at marriage and all that. Yeah. So that our men can be um, ready for the right family he wants to build in the future if this session has been a blessing to you please put an emoji fire in the comment section and make sure you go on our youtube channel and like and subscribe with no further ado my name is david and it's a blessing to be with you uh, today tonight mm -hmm. i will say bye for now if my co-hosts don't have anything to say. Yes, thank you so much. I really enjoyed um, this time. And um, I don't have any other thing to say. I'm just saying thank you so much for, for hanging in there, for staying all the way to the end. All of you guys that stayed to the end, God bless you. And we'll see you um, on another live, I think next week we might have a program in church. So if we have a program in church, we we usually don't come on live because we are we are this crusade ground or church, right? But whenever we don't have a program, then you'll see us here live. Very happy to talk to you guys and to rub minds, answer your questions, share your ideas, and learn from each other. We, this is a learning curve. We're all here to learn, right? Nobody is an island, so we all want to learn. So. Yeah, on that note, we... Thanks, Chukwe Buka for joining. Ibikwe, James, Rams, Mercy, Ango. Yeah, you guys are, you are the last people standing. Um, with no further ado, we are going to say bye and see you on the next one. Thank you. Stay bye. tuned. Next one is about women, right? So come with your questions and come with the fire within you. So let's talk about the women. All right. Bullets. I know. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Au revoir. Au revoir. <laughs>